Yeah. Uh, and not being a judge. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. And uh, at this time, we'll have public comment, uh, but we'd like to limit any matters to the agenda for action. If you wish to be to come forward and give your name for the record, you can sit right here. The amount of discussion as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Any comments? Okay, we'll move on. For possible action, we would like to uh, approve the <coughs> minutes from the January 24th, 2018. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Next agenda item, discuss, discuss for possible action regarding the update on the sports park contract amendment. And the city auditor's office will give us an update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Brian Smith, Internal Audit Section Manager. Last audit committee meeting, we discussed the incomplete audit recommendations from the audit of the Sports Park Development and Management Agreement. During that meeting, the Director of Operations and Maintenance, Jerry Walker, reported that the city was in negotiations with the contractor to modify the existing agreement and thereby address the incomplete audit recommendations. Mr. Walker is here today to give us an update on the status of his I'm happy to report that uh, yesterday we received a signed copy of the contract. Uh, after we talked with you, the uh, partner did attempt to negotiate some additional concessions from us. Uh, we did not budge on our position on what we offered. We've already made a fair and reasonable offer. Uh, the contract um, addresses various issues such as uh, collecting Clark County driver's license information, things like that. Uh, Teresa's here. She can give us a full survey or a full uh, review of that if you'd like. I believe all we gave was a 10-year extension on their contract time, although some of those were mutually beneficial changes. And so we have this on tentatively on the council agenda for May 16th. Uh, we'll put it on at that time. Uh, they've signed their copy. We do have one more hurdle to jump, though. We have um, BLM. This is a BLM parcel. And there have been some other issues, uh, operational issues. And so we don't want to take any chance of uh, not following up with BLM and having them address this with us after the fact. And so we will send this to BLM for their concurrence uh, and we'll ask for their input. Go ahead and put it on the council agenda on the 16th with the statement that we'll sign once BLM is approved. I'm sorry, Jerry Walker, operations and maintenance for the record. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, have any comments from the committee? All right. Okay. Uh, Jerry, what is the, uh, it must be an old legacy uh, Provision from DL and maybe on the digital transfer. Is that what it is that we're? Yes, there was the original documentation. I'm going to go ahead and let Teresa answer that question so yeah. she can answer it more thoroughly than I can. Um, Teresa Boyce, Real Estate Administrator, Operations and Maintenance. Um, that is on the Angel Park parcel, and the Angel Park parcel is a patent, so it has to be for public purpose, and so every agreement that we put upon that patent has to be approved by the BLM. I wasn't associated with Angel Park as Sports Park. No, again, Jerry Walker, it's hard to see that they're contiguous as part of the larger parcel. Uh, and so they are contiguous, and that's right next to the golf course, but you wouldn't necessarily know they were the same larger parcel. Uh, and again, this likely will, would not have required their approval, uh, but given that there are issues with our activities at Angel Park, we'll ask the question. I think it's going to see that. Well, they would be on this. We have a patent of a, I think it's, I want to say 320 acres there. Um, but there's no uh, right immediately adjacent there vacant land No. Okay. Well, there's vacant land upon the Angel Park parcel. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, yeah. Yes, there's vacant land upon it, but it's under our patent right now. Right. Okay. I'll find out. Okay. Let me just interject here real quick. I mean, um, Scott Abbey, city manager, is it not, is, is the Alto Wallify site the site that was part of the Lions Field probably 10 years ago? Is that adjacent to that part? Yes. Okay. There is a piece that we had um, transferred to us. I'm not sure if it's been fully transferred, 
but it it's, was part of the Cancer Institute, the original development, which has succeeded to Roseman that we've been working on. But, so I want it. Go ahead. But, I was going to say, that that's not under the BLM's. I mean, that is a BLM parcel, but it's not currently with the yeah, BLM or the management. So. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I got out on the record. Any other comments or questions? I'll, I'll accept the motion. It's moved forward. Acceptance. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Moving forward. Okay. For discussion of possible action regarding the update on the municipal court, or municipal courts, the incomplete audit recommendation status, and I think we'll have uh, audit direct start this off. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Brian Smith, audit manager. Last audit committee meeting, we discussed an incomplete audit recommendation of the municipal court dating back to 2009. The court administrator advised the committee. The standards upon which our recommendation were based at that time are now optional. The audit committee asked us to review the revised standards and return to this meeting with a proposal on how to proceed with this incomplete audit recommendation. As you may recall, in 2009, the court asked our office to independently complete the court's minimum accounting standards checklist. In completing this checklist, the court responded no to the five questions shown on this slide. Um, in conjunction with us completing this checklist for the court, we reported these five areas of non-compliance in our audit. Now, while the wording of these standards changed and expanded with subsequent versions of the minimum accounting standards, all but the last question there remained in effect until January 2018, at which time they became optional. The intent of these standards is to encourage courts throughout the state to appropriately manage and monitor the amounts of their court and collections of these amounts. The way this is accomplished can vary greatly among courts depending on the size of the court and the sophistication of the systems being used. Despite these standards now being optional, we believe the municipal court should be following the underlying objectives of these standards. The city's court administrator has represented to us that the court is appropriately tracking amounts of the court and managing collections of these amounts and is therefore meeting the intended objectives of these now optional standards. In order to close out this audit recommendation, we propose to the committee that our office return to the court prior to the next audit committee meeting to perform testing procedures to verify that the court is indeed appropriately tracking and monitoring amounts of the court and collections of these amounts. Once we are satisfied that this is the case, we will close out this recommendation. We now welcome any comments Mr. Blavat may have regarding this incomplete audit recommendation and our proposal on how to proceed. Thank you, Dean Levac, Mr. Court Administrator. To make it real simple, I agree with our recommendation. Um, however, I think it's important to note that when I took over in 2014, AOC was actually looking at the minimum accounting standards. Since that roughly time period that issues occurred in Ferguson, Missouri, and uh, there's been a increase in social awareness of the impact of fines and fees on a disparate portion of the population, um, and there has been less focus on the financial aspects of courts versus compliance aspects of courts. While they can be synonymous, what's most important is that a defendant complies with the orders of the court. Those orders are extremely flexible. Uh, it may start out, pay a $400 fine, but when a defendant is found indigent or, or doesn't have a job, that's converted to, to work service. If somebody doesn't fit uh, the parameters of a work program, they have a prior felony or they're disabled and can't pick up garbage on Fremont, for instance, that's converted to community service and maybe may be transferred over to Goodwill or even allowed to work at a church or uh, some sort of nonprofit scenario. So it's a very flexible scenario. Ultimately, at the end of the day, our measurement is, are we successfully closing out those cases with defendants completing their requirements? To that extent, the financial requirements have kind of become much more minimized. Really, what we're looking at is on an individual case basis, are people completed within the time of framework? That being said, we still look at, on a large scale, on an average basis per case, how much is that actually generating the revenue? It doesn't drive decisions, but it informs the decisions. Um, obviously, if there's big jumps, spikes, either way, we have to go back and look at our business processes 
it's certainly possible during times of recession, for instance, you're going to collect less per case financially, push compliance rate may stay exactly the same just through shifting from financial revenue to work product revenue. So um, we feel we're definitely tracking every single defendant uh, completely, how much they were originally assessed, how much they ultimately pay, and whether that payment is in the form of a true cash payment, a financial payment, or a work product payment, or sometimes just a waiver because the judge deems that uh, they have otherwise reformed their lives and taken steps and they waive the fines and fees. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to first swing this one. Um, so if I understand, did, did you guys have a meeting of the minds with audit? And were you guys able to discuss some, some of these issues? I, I believe we have. I, I believe that the big thing was that while we think that yeah. the standards are not optional, right. um, they're still important to inform decisions. They don't drive decisions. It's not the sole decision making of, of how we determine if we're doing a good job. Um, what really is important is the individual basis, and I think that's where um, Brian is coming from. Are we tracking those individuals and can we measure those results? So if I, as an individual, if I came to you and said, how much do I owe, you can tell me, you can tell me the ins and the outs. And there's still some monitoring in place, there's still some policies in, in place, and this, we're still kind of using as a general framework. Is that, would that be safe to say? Absolutely. We're using it as a framework, not as a, as a Bible, as we're, we must do this, we must do this, we must, must do this. But it's more of a framework that we're going to be doing some of these things, and it's based and tailored on the needs of the actual city. Very much so. Yeah, the only that means for administrator, perhaps even better said than I did. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Any other comments or questions? Follow up? Maybe we should mark the record. <laughs> <laughs> I think the record will reflect the side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is something we are here because we should encourage that to be done. Yeah, I know. Sure, we both can bear us. We want to comply with AOC. Yeah. Are we flexible enough to understand this situation here versus what ought to be the situation that we ought to be doing? Thank you, Councilman Coffin. Uh, again, Dana LeBac, Municipal Court Administrator. We've actually been through several AOC audits since then and been, have been in compliance. Uh, the, the standards have changed. We are in compliance with what AOC now says. Um, again, these standards are now optional. So they do guide our decisions. They're just not mandatory and, and uh, enforceable standards, so to speak. Now, I like to continue. Now, their standards are not such that uh, they're not concerned, frankly, about the health of a municipality, but the financial accounting of a municipality. Here. They're concerned about their standards, uh, which means basically making sure they get their money, because it's the uh, administrative assessment that they live on. A lot, a lot of so um, I just need to know that our team feels that uh, that the county is correct and that the foundation is taking place correctly. And that stuff doesn't get lost in the group. That's the main thing. Brian, you know, or anybody else, right? They're just, just say, do we know where all the money is? And at least we know that the eyes get dead a lot of it. But, uh, you know, so we go. Thanks, you know, like City Hall. Councilman Coffin, that's what I think we're, we are going to go through that process. We're going to uh, do our due diligence to make sure that, that we can say that there are proper procedures, there, there's a process in, in, in effect, and that we have reasonable assurance that, that the accounts receivable that we're talking about are being managed. So that, that's, that's what we would like to do as the next step. And once we've completed that step, if everything checks out fine, then I think we're ready to fill this off. When do we want to take care of Pulse again, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. When do we want to take Pulse again? Actually, uh, Councilman Coffin, they, uh, Redstone and City Auditor, uh, they will, they get it on a periodic basis. Uh, the last time they did this, they actually went outside, uh, the course went outside and hired an outside auditor to come in and do the evaluation. We, we've done it twice and they've hired people to come in the other time. So periodically, and I can't remember if it's uh, two or four years, good thing. I can't remember, but they they periodically are reviewed uh, for minimum accounting standards. And this, and this is Chairman, so we're going to go through and we're going to validate some of this information and we'll have another final report hopefully closing this issue. 
uh, in the July 25th meeting? Is that the plan? If that uh, Red Snow and City Auditor, if that's what you'd like, we can come back and, and take care of that. We also thought there was a possibility that it, if all those uh, uh, all those things that we're concerned about can be resolved, that we would just go ahead and close the time now and then give you notice that we did that. Okay. Now we can come back and make the report if that's what you prefer. No, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think we'll be fine. If it doesn't close, I think we'd like to be notified. If it doesn't close, but otherwise, just let us know when it's closed and we'll be fine. So just keep this, keep this moving and let's get it going. And let's get it closed. I think that's good. And I'd like to compliment you, Dana, as well, just working through this. This is not an easy issue, we understand. But you're sorting through the, the going through the weeds, and you're you're figuring out what is important and what isn't important. And I think working with audit, I think you you come probably to the right decision. And I would agree from the outside looking in that it seems like we're doing we're doing everything that we should be. So hopefully you pass the test and uh, we close this issue and we move on. Thank you, Chairman. Any other comments? Well, yeah. Any other comments or questions? If not, I will accept the motion to accept. Make a motion to accept the uh, audit recommendation for dispositioning the next item. Okay. And the, uh, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving on. Let's uh, discuss the possible action on the Audit Department of Public Safety Animal Control Pet Licenses Permits and Issue Civil Citations. Nancy Beattie was the lead auditor on this audit, and she gave us the three comments. Good morning, members of the committee. As part of this annual audit plan, I'm completing the audit for the Department of Public Safety and Animal Control. The audit objective was to assess the adequacy of management control for the financial and I'm sorry, Chairman. I, the clerk is having just a little bit of a problem hearing you, Nancy. Thank you. Nancy. financial and administrative function of pet licenses, permits, and issues civil citations. The scope of the audit was limited to the transactions and activity that occurred during fiscal year in this June 30th, 2017, and other Individuals who live in Las Vegas are required to obtain licenses for their pets, which can be purchased through one of three entities. Pet data oversees the database of pet licenses, and they receive payments either online or through the mail. The Animal Foundation accepts payments for pet licenses issued for adoptions and pets claimed by their owners. And the city finance cash limit will also accept payments through assets and citywide payment receiving applications. Individuals apply for various permits, including dog fancier, pet, uh, cat fancier, professional animal handler, breeder, and wild animal. Applications are submitted to animal control and invoice by finance to Oracle. And payments can be either mailed to city, uh, city hall address or accepted at finance cash or windows. Payments must be made before inspections are scheduled and permits are issued. Non compliance with municipal code provisions can result in the issuance of citations in areas such as no pet license, no pet pay, no rabies vaccination for unintended pets. Payments of citations of process through finance, cash your window, or mail to a city hall address and receive it through Atlas. I'd like to now uh, review the findings. Finding wrong. I found that receivable systems were not used to pursue collection of unpaid pet licenses, permits, and civil citations. The status of each is noted on this slide for fiscal year to, uh, June 30th, 2017. Audit procedures included reconciling four monthly reports submitted to the city for pet licenses purchased at the Animal Foundation. Direct reconciliation between the Animal Foundation reports and pet data reports showed a total of difference of 34 uh, licenses. However, when looking at the individual licenses and data, the Animal Foundation reports include 90, 90 licenses not included on the pet data reports, and the pet data reports include 101 licenses not issued on the Animal Foundation reports. Finding three, audit procedures included reviewing the permit and permit application files. Considering that inspections are not completed and the invoices are paid, the above slide shows the number of permits not invoiced as well as the invoices paid when we were unable to confirm that inspections were completed. 
94. Although the municipal, excuse me, although the municipal code allow, allows for penalty adjustment of 65 to 75 percent, a majority of the adjustments range between 20 and 40 percent. In addition, late fees of 100 percent are allowed if payment is not made within 30 days and increases to 150 percent after 45 days. Late payment fees are not assessed. The only notification provided after citations are issued is that hearing decision. Finding number five, cut data and animal foundation accept debit and credit card payments online uh, on behalf of the city. Efforts have not been made to ensure that they, they are PCI compliant and their, their security system policies are comparable to the city's. Finding number six, the city entered into a cooperative agreement in 2005 with Clark County, North Las Vegas, and Henderson for the use of Chameleon software, which is used to monitor pets in the valley. The software is licensed to be made by the maintained by the city. The city invoices the software operating costs for the other entities. The city continues to invoice at the rate established in 2005. No evaluations have been completed of basic invoices for changes in income ratios or maintenance fees. Finding number seven. Animal control charges either $25 and $50 for the issuance of permits and the associated inspections. In discussion with the animal control supervisor, the time associated with completing the inspection and considering preparation, travel, and the actual inspection of the process in at least two hours. An analysis was completed to determine the cost of completing the inspection using staff mid-range salary and benefits. The above slide shows that the permit fee charge does not cover the cost of completing the inspection. This concludes my briefing. I would like to thank Animal control staff for the assistance is greatly appreciated. I'm available to answer any questions. <coughs> Representatives of the public safety, IT, and finance are also here to answer these questions. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay. Do we have a management agency member from our management response? Good morning, Tim Shatler, Department of Public Safety Deputy Chief. I also have Mark McCoy. He's a lieutenant that oversees uh, animal control. Both of us, have, Mark has just more recently come into supervision of that unit, and I'm coming back over supervision of the units. We're we're getting caught up on all of this. Nancy's been great through all of this with us. Um, we appreciate finance and IT as well um, with all their assistance. Um, we're working through each one of these. Um, uh, items and have come up with a plan to address each and every one of them. Um, the animal control unit has uh, 15 uh, positions right now, four supervisors. Um, they respond to about 25,000 calls a year, so they're a very busy group. The supervision, we've had uh, several, um, we just got another set of supervisor in that unit. We have, we're slotted for four of them. And so a lot of this, um, when I read through it, it really revolves around the, the supervisor's responsibility here, and we just haven't had them. We've had a really difficult time getting, we've had a number of recruitments and have had a difficult time getting animal control supervisors, which are the ones that kind of cover this. So we are working through it. We appreciate all the assistance we've been getting, and uh, we welcome any questions you guys have. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, so do you do you agree with the findings and, and yes, you guys will work through the, the dates and stuff like that that you put in the report? And stuff? Yes, sir. Do you agree with those? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we welcome the audit. I mean, I know the auditor's office, every time they want to do an audit, we I think we've actually asked them to do audits before. So we appreciate when they come in and take a look at it. We're more than happy to um, improve our operations and do better. So we're, we're good with that. We're rule followers and uh, we want to do that. So. Very good. Yeah. Any further questions, comments? Any questions? I don't know. Maybe to address this to Brian. Um, inadequate is always a loaded word in audits um, because it almost requires some sort of adjective or adverb to say how big or how bad or how, mm -hmm. how inadequate something is. Uh, I can't really tell if we have a serious problem here in any, any of these. Uh, Things. What, what, uh, what strikes you, Brian, as something that needs new uh, attention, perhaps uh, assistance to the department? With it? Brian Smith, audit manager. Um, I'll let Nancy be uh, uh, respond to this. 
Um, <laughs> we've got a name there. <laughs> uh, Nancy B. Um, the first item has to do with receivables. Uh, currently, there is no receivable collection process in place. For example, for um, citations, um, for in 2017, I reviewed all the effort, all the um, the various uh, citations that were heard with this, the um, hearing, the hearing uh, officer. There was the original citation amount was two hundred forty-six thousand and fifty dollars. We received payments of only forty-four thousand four hundred eighty-one dollars, which represents only a eighteen percent collection percentage. In um, at the end of the fiscal year, there were eighteen thousand four hundred animal uh, expired pet licenses. The active pet, pet license is a little bit over twenty-five thousand. So that's um, which are almost as many expired pet licenses as current export pet licenses. So, as far as those two areas, uh, that I think that, that kind of demonstrates that that's really inadequate oversight there. That that is not enough. As far as the hearing citations themselves, they are never in there. The only notice they get is the original citation, as well as the answer from the hearing officer. There's no follow-up invoices ever completed at this point in time. So I think that also represents the decision. Okay. So, yeah. so the thing is, is that sometimes it's difficult to get public awareness of the licenses. Because you've got a situation where you had a funny exchange on the council of Dallas a month or so ago about one of the council members that says that uh, mm -hmm. just couldn't register their fits. And, uh, well, it was, it was in a joking way, but in a way, it also boils down to, do we consider it serious? Do we consider it as a community serious? If we do, then we have to push for licenses. We have to push out to ourselves and afford licenses. Uh, so, that's just a little bit of a I'm curious if the observations of the department of this looks like paper, and movement of paper. When I started the audit, at that time we had a staff of 12, one supervisor and 11, 11 staff, which, although they don't work 24-7, they respond 24-7. And at that time, there was no admin and clerical type support. So a lot of this was managed and controlled by that one supervisor, who also would have to come in on the weekends to cover people's and, and, and respond for whatever showed up at the time. So, there was definitely a shortage of staff that led to a lot of this. Chairman, if I may, I'm sorry. Chairman, if I may, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
Are you shorthanded in there? And how do you ask for the position? It's not like you need a management analyst position in there. Well, you know, it's not relation. I'm thinking it's, okay, there's a difference between this kind of department, which has a small staff, but has an enormous amount of paper to move. You know, that, we obviously need the field staff, but if we're putting together lots of paper, it's never going to Never but I, and I'm going to just answer a couple of your questions. Just one of these, just for everyone, friendly reminder, just to please identify yourself each time so as we're going back and forth. I'm sure I was doing that. So we know who's talking. Tim Shatler, Department of Public Safety. Just answer um, a couple of your questions, Councilman. We've we've evaluated the applicants and we've already corrected some of these. And so along the way, we've done some things. Like we've done some things. 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 We've done some We've done some things. 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 We've done some the letters go out to remind people about payments and, and that. So a lot of this stuff we can automate and we're working towards that. So we don't have to have a staff member dedicated to doing those things. Um, so we've corrected we've corrected that. The other thing I wanted to kind of, um, when Nancy was talking about the citations amount, the hearings officer adjusted that down to 187,000 from the 246. And so um, we've corrected that as well. He was, he was over correcting those payments down. Um, under. He was charging under. Less. Yeah, he was charging less for, so there's a, a specific uh, percentage and amounts that they're able to reduce it by. 60 or 70, 65 and 75%, and he was only reducing it by 20, uh, 40%. About 70 were in that range. And I, when I read the code, it's kind of like this is a motivation to get people to make sure they're in compliance. If you come in and show us if you comply with us, we can reduce that fee down considerably. However, if after 30 days we don't, it goes back to the original amount and we'll assess the 100% of penalty on it. That part of the process and the code has never been in place. And so now we've automated that part by putting it into, and I, I can't remember the name of the system, so I'm Tim Shatter, Department of Public Safety for it. So we're putting all of this information to Oracle, which is going to auto-generate. So if it goes over 30 days, it's going to generate something. And if it goes to, I think, 45 days, um, it generates the late one and tells them now you owe 150% of what you what you did. So we're automating a lot of this, and so I think that's going to be helpful, too. Well, thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could carry on, and I want to ask the city manager step in here, too. I do work right on crunch time in the budget. And, uh, you know, I don't know if they ask for enough people. If they ask and we did not give them a spot, it sounds like the matter is automated. You still have to have a plan in the deal to keep the flow moving. Chairman Hanley and our feet, Council of Health. Over the last few years, we've really been building up their engines, support staff for, for public safety. Uh, it was really short for a while, and I think their staff were really wanted to be. Well, of course, we must make a but I think the discussion with Chief Freeman, I believe, we really need to be at this point in time. There was no, no request for an additional admin person, if I recall, in this budget. Or was there? There was a, an ASA, I believe. Yeah, but I, I think what we did is we. I believe we've got like four admin people in that department. So it, it's pretty well staffed. It's just the distribution of where we're going to go out there. But we're working on that. And I think the coverage is there. Um, Animal, maybe it was like the step out. We're not getting the attention it needs, but it is getting the attention now. So we're really focusing on Animal and the entire uh, department as a whole. Let me, let me jump in here. That's Scott, I'm the manager. I would, given that there's five, eight positions in that department, two of which are supervisory, I'd like to see them fully staffed up, evaluate how they're able to handle the workload with full staffing before we start um, adding new positions to that function. It's a very large department. I think we really need to work with them on identifying how they can handle that administrative support when they're fully staffed to determine whether or not we need to add any more staff to their department. We're only going to get your interrupt. We have built a communication with people who are they're trying to hire, and it just doesn't sound like people who can help me with the paper and if you can address those are field people, which are you know, that's the point. It's a good point, you know, but it's like but we're um, we're either going to continue to audit them and keep them up short uh, and then maybe spank them or to give them a person to do it right. Or cut one of those field people you know, I don't know, Mr. Chairman, I just feel like uh, this is not 
So those are the two different places that are taking payments. Pet data is PCI compliant. They've sent us the proof of being PCI compliant. Um, the Animal Foundation, we believe they are. They've sent us some proof that they are, but we requested some additional uh, information from them just to make sure. Um, you know, there there was no um, provision when we when we did the agreements for PCI compliance in the agreements that we had with them. We're working on that as well with the city attorney's office to come up with an amendment to the agreement with the Animal Foundation to add that to it to make sure that that that's in every agreement we have with someone who's going to be taking money on behalf of the city to make sure that they are PCI compliant. Thank you. Have they any more comments? Yeah. Um, Chief, on the last uh, number seven, it talks about you're going to uh, submit an ordinance in the future to talk about increasing the fees. Um, I just want to, if you're going to do that, I just want to caution you don't come up with huge fee increases to make up for lack of free fee increases in the past because, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm on the recommending committee and those are tough to swallow when you just jack them up really high. So just keep that in mind when you're putting that coordinates. Yeah. Tim Shatler, the Department of Public Safety, yes, I agree 100% with you. That was a recommendation. We're going to look at it. We're going to look at the other local jurisdictions, see what they're charging for the same uh, services, and then we'll, we'll make a determination if we need to and how much. And uh, we'll obviously be working with the city manager's office for anything like that as well. Great. Great. Thanks. Yeah, basically, you're absolutely right. When we first implemented the uh, pet licensing, we did a survey of all the other jurisdictions that they were charging for their pet licensing. We knew it would not be 100% cost recovery because the uh, pet licensing would be cost recovery and no one would participate. Uh, so we were at a price point where we felt it was reasonable and that people had asked to participate. Thank you. Chairman, thank you for the very good points as well. If there's no other comments, uh, I'll accept the motion to this I have one other comment. I know Animal Foundation, um, this is Member Rillo, I know there's a big focus on positive placement, too, of the schools itself, and how does that affect some of these recommendations that are found with the pricing and all of that stuff to make sure that the pets have, you know, stay in the homes and not in the shelters? Tim Chapman, the Department of Public Safety. That's a good point. We don't want to charge too much for things because people won't want to adopt animals and all of that. So there is a balance and a fine line we want to keep to. 
um, so that we don't hinder their efforts over there, which are really our efforts to, yeah, no, I agree with you. The, the evaluation on the increases only relates to the permits, not on the other item. And that is just for like a breeder permit and for the staff have to go out and see them and evaluate and, and make sure that the location is, is adequate for the animals there. I just want to point out. Chairman, how do you have to be seeing that? On that point, I believe we have like an amnesty period once a year where we work with the animal foundation and we don't charge, I think it's like the employment things like maybe summer. Where people can adopt animals and we'll charge our way and we'll see them charge for them. So we're trying to adopt the new animals for the line of the shop and then loving those. Thank you. Any motion? Move for acceptance. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you guys. Um, next is discussion of possible action on the audit of the Office of the City Teacher Enterprise Record Management Division. Price, Smith Audit Manager. Uh, James Burnett was the lead auditor on this audit. He'll give us the lead answer. Thank you. James Burnett, uh, internal auditor to the City Auditor's Office. Our office completed an audit of the Enterprise Records Management Division of the Office of the city clerk. That's true. The enterprise records management division is overseen by the enterprise records officer and has six additional employees assigned. The enterprise records management division is responsible for assisting the assisting city departments assess their record retention needs to include developing citywide records management policies and procedures. Additionally, the Enterprise Records Management Division is responsible for operating the Archive and Record Center known as the ARC. The ARC is the city's secure storage facility located at the city's West Yard. The purpose of the ARC is to house the city's archive collections and inactive records with a minimum retention period greater than 10 years. Our objectives in completing the audit were to determine whether existing policies and procedures reflect current operations and are adequate, determine the adequacy of the quality assurance activities being performed by the enterprise records officer to verify department compliance with citywide record management policy and procedures, determine whether training is adequate for department records delegates, and deter determine the adequacy of the procedures to keep the record retention schedules current, determine if the record destruction process of the ARC is designed to ensure that only records scheduled for destruction are destroyed and determine the adequacy of the process being followed to monitor the timeliness, timeliness of public records requests. I'd now like to discuss our audit findings and recommendations with you. While the Office of the City Clerk has created, um, sorry, finding number one, incomplete internal records management procedures. While the Office of the City Clerk has created citywide policies and various information guides, and reference materials related to the records management program, the Enterprise Records Management Division lacks detailed internal operating procedures that clearly identify the roles and responsibilities of the staff in performing their duties. For example, the following procedures are needed. Procedures for monitoring compliance by departments with the citywide ERM procedures, including the following areas. Completion of record inventories, review of and updating of record retention schedules, creation, of department procedures, procedures for our staff, including the following areas, receipt of records from departments, storage of records in warehouse and vault, retrieval of records from departments, maintenance of our storage records within SIRE, which is the city's uh, database they use to track records, destruction of records, facility access reviews, procedures for reviewing and approving requests by city departments to implement an electronic records management system, Public records request response monitoring and reporting procedures. Uh, our recommendations uh, to address this issue are to document internal operating procedures for monitoring the city department compliance with city enterprise records, management procedures, archives and archives and records staff, and staff reviewing and approving requests by city department switching to implement it. Uh, electronic records management system monitoring and reporting on public records requests. Uh, finding number two, incomplete city records, citywide records management procedures. 
The Office of the City Clerk has issued the following citywide policies and procedures. Um, electronic records, uh, which is CL002, and it was last updated to 12308. Uh, destruction of public <coughs> records, ROPCL201, last updated uh, March 31st, 2009. Development of uh, record retention schedules, ROPCL203, last updated March 31st, 2009. Archives and Records Center, Storage Policy Procedure, CL003, and that was last updated uh, December 4th, 2017. <coughs> In addition, the RM has developed conditions the developer made available various informational guides uh, and reference materials related to recommend programs to assist city departments. And well, the, the city clerk has released and released the archive records center policy procedure during our audit. Other than uh, other office of citywide office of city clerk city <coughs> procedures have not been updated since 2008 uh, the development of records uh, Another issue was the development of records retention schedule procedure. First, to a records management committee that has not been existed since 2008. Additionally, the existing citywide records management policy and procedure do not accurately address the use of GovQA, which is the system used to uh, process public records requests by city employees and departments that utilize the software to process those requests. Our recommendation is for management to evaluate the accuracy and completeness of the existing citywide enterprise record management policy procedures and update them as necessary. Additionally, management should update existing policies to ensure that they include the proper use of the to a city employees and departments that utilize the software. Uh, finding number three is a lack of a formalized records management training program. Now, each city department has one or more employees that have been designated as records delegates. These employees are tasked with to work with the department director to ensure their department is in place with the city director and their respective doc document retention schedule. While various reference documents exist, no formalized reoccurring training program has been developed for the records delegates and city departments and there is no formalized approach to reviewing the performance of the records so, our recommendations are to develop and implement a formalized enterprise records management program to provide a minimum of records delegates. The attendees should be required to sign a document confirming their receipt of the training and understanding of applicable policies and procedures. The training program should, at a minimum, outline the responsibilities for managing, managing departmental records, reinforce citywide ERN policies and procedures, support the departments in their completion of annual records manager review. Additionally, management should evaluate how to regularly communicate records management program information to all city employees. Finding number four, inadequate review of records to be destroyed. The Archives and Records Center utilizes an outside vendor to destroy, destroy stored records whose retention period has passed and for which approval has been obtained by the respective department. An ARC employee is re required to observe the destruction of the records by the outside vendor. And while this employee identifies the boxes to be destroyed from the vendor and observes the destruction, there is no documentation provided to the vendor of receipt of this, the, by the vendor for receipt of this information. Additionally, no formalized internal operating procedure for the document destruction process has been developed. Our recommendation is for management to document and implement record destruction internal operating procedures that should include a requirement that our staff provide the records destruction vendor with documentation <coughs> outlining what is to be destroyed and to obtain, obtain acknowledgement from the vendor of the receipt of this information. Additionally, the procedure should address the subsequent procedures for reviewing the vendor's interest. Finding number five, incorrect methodology used with public records request response method. The records management division works with departments to ensure they are complying with records requests. Public records requests made to the city can be completed in person, by email, via the phone, or online using the software known as GovQA. Requests received by city departments outside of GovQA are to be input into GovQA for tracking purposes and to allow for monitoring compliance with the requirement in NRS. That the city respond to the request no later than the end of the fifth business day. A monthly report is run from the GovQA system to be utilized by the ERM division to identify responses out of compliance with this requirement. The results are then posted to the city's website and this is a key performance indicator for the Office of the City Clerk. 
and testing the calculation being performed by the Army Division to determine whether the Department's public records response was in compliance with statute. We found an error in the methodology being used. A public records request <coughs> responded to within 60 business hours was considered to be in compliance rather than 52.5 hours, which reflects the five which reflects five days depending on the hour work day, which corresponds to the city's business hours. Our recommendation is for management to change the compliance measurement to accurately reflect the city's established business hours. Additionally, management should document the gov 2 system configuration and change management process. Finally, finding number six, a lack of periodic records, inventory procedures of the Archives and Records Center. According to the Archives and Records Center Storage Policy Procedure, records sent to the Archives and Records Center become the custody of the Enterprise Records Management Division. Information on these records are retained in a record database known as SIRE. No procedures are currently completed by the Archives and Records Center staff to verify the accuracy of the information retained within SIRE and or the continued existence of the records being stored at the Archives. We recommend that management document and implement procedures requiring Archives and Records Center staff to periodically complete an inventory of a sample of records being stored at the Archives and Records Center. Information on boxes within the warehouse should be compared to the information within the record database. Uh, the Office of the City Clerk Management are very supportive of this report and the recommendation and have provided their responses and estimated dates of completion of the back of the audit report. Uh, we would now be glad to respond to any questions you may have regarding this report. Also present are Luann Holmes, the City Clerk, and Patricia Cabrera, the Enterprise Records Officer. This concludes my report. Okay. This is Chairman Hadley. Thank you, James, for that report. And Luann, I'm interested to see how it feels to be on the other side of the table, <laughs> but the other leg of the table. Right now. Ah. <laughs> Office of City Clerk, uh, City Clerk Luann Holmes, and with me, of course, is Patricia Cabrera. She's the Enterprise Records Officer. Mm -hmm. Feels good. We we welcomed this. We were really excited to actually um, get the assistance of the audit department. Um, we recognize and agree with everything that they put out here, and we've already started putting some um, plans in place to, to address some of the recommendations. Well, the chairman had this. So anyone that's perfect, go ahead and exit. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you guys are doing a great job. We appreciate all the hard work you put in. No one's perfect, and audit is, is helping, not hurting. Absolutely. We're trying to find things. And, and to summarize everything that James said, we bring records in, people request them, they go out, they come back in, and then eventually we destroy them. And we just need to track things in and out. And they were able to, to find some, some things that I think are going to be very helpful to make the controls more more strong and make sure that the information is always going to be there. Absolutely. So obviously not a not a demerit by any means or anything like that, but it's just good work and we're all working together as a team. Any comments or questions from the committee? Well, <laughs> I am an amateur historian. Say your name, please. Coffin. Coffin is an amateur historian, which means nothing except that. If I had my brothers, I wouldn't throw anything away. But what discussion has to take place? I mean, it is, there's an art to it. It's not just the science based on the dates and how, early, how old something is. There's a selection process, a culling that has to happen so that something organic and something uh, historic it doesn't get tossed. Uh, or at least not tossed without a copy. So I'd like to visit the Ark. Uh, I've been thinking about that for years and I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the process that you're using it. And particularly on some of the older stuff that some people might think is just absolutely unimportant and not necessary. But that in fact could be critical. Uh, that's just the way it is for me. And, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I, like I say, I, I'd have a hard time throwing anything away. Mr. Chairman Headley, if we're going to go to the ark, maybe we should go two by two. All right, that's it. We never roll up into it. I'd be happy to join you. All the fans that we will keep the species. Mr. Chairman, any other comments? Questions? <laughs> if not, I'll go ahead and, and take a recommendation. Motion to accept. Okay. All in favor? Uh, 
Okay. 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 You got a piece of it. 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 You got a piece uh, Ryan Smith, office manager. As, <laughs> since the last audit committee meeting, our office has released two audit reports, which you've been briefed on today. And we currently have four audits in process, including what you see up on the slide there. House arrest in municipal court, city marshals and public safety, RDA set aside funds and community services, and the Darling Tennis Center contracting parks and recreation. That concludes my report. Okay. No, we need, to, we need to accept anything here. Is no. Informational. Informational. Right. Sure. Okay. So let's move straight into the report by uh, staff regarding the staffing level uh, within the office of the city auditor. Brian Smith, audit manager. Our office uh, recently advertised for the position of an internal auditor to will soon begin interviewing candidates for this position. While the city's fiscal year 2019 budget has not yet been finalized and approved by the city council, the city manager's office has included the addition of a senior IT auditor to our staff in the draft budget. Upon approval of the budget and the beginning of next fiscal year, we'll begin recruiting to fill this position. And here on the slide you can see our org chart and the two items highlighted in yellow are the two positions we're looking for. Is that a No, it can't slide. We'll, we'll work on that. This is Chairman Heavy. We'll work on the, the material to make sure everything's available. But it looks like there's a, a IT auditor and an IT and then auditor two? Yes. Is that what it is? So the internal auditor two, which is on the right there, that's the position we're currently interviewing for. Yeah. And then next next fiscal year we'll start uh, recruiting for the senior IT auditor position. Thanks for kind of converting that into a question for me. Uh, this, uh, I know we bumped up staffing in the agency. Was it a couple of budgets ago or one budget ago? So, uh, out of these two, is a searching for or open and advertising for. Do we have any other spots that are unfilled? No. Right now, just this internal auditor, two positions is the one that's taken. We have and we, as I mentioned, we did. We have already advertised for that position. We have. We got. We got responses. Um, as I mentioned previously, sometimes it's challenged to to get candidates who have the proper certifications. Typically, we're looking for a CPA, a certified internal auditor, certified fraud examiners, and, uh, you know, just to give you an example of the challenges that we face, I think we received applications from about 80 candidates, and out of that, I believe there were only 12 that had at least one of those certifications that we were looking for. Okay. Well, do you think it's that a pay scale or uh, work here in Las Vegas versus working in other places? I don't know where those applicants came from. Or Brad, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilman Cobb, and Ranch Hill and City Auditor. I think there are a lot of uh, auditors in this town, but they tend to be gaming auditors and they tend to be. Um, Gaming control board just mm. related to the gaming industry. So when when we start looking for a uh, performance auditor, there aren't a lot out there in this area. So I, I think that the, uh, the salaries that we're talking about are should attract people, and we do get some people. Uh, a number of those uh, applications are for people out of town too. So we, we are getting those. One, one thing I'd also like to point out, uh, Councilman Coffin, with your, uh, with your comment, uh, James Burnett, who gave the uh, presentation today, is a new position that we did fill. The one that is open right now is the position that Phil Marmorowski held 
and we're replacing that one. And then the uh, IT senior auditor will be a new position also. So we are increasing the staff size as we go on as fast as we can find somebody that we can actually use and, and move them in. But then we have plans to do it. One thing, Mr. Chairman, if I could continue to go, nobody asked you some questions about the future. You didn't, Brian, you didn't rat. So, well, well, where are we? Gaming auditors, they probably make a lot of money at casinos. But then they have a you know, job security. Um, so, board and commission, they have auditors. But there's a lot of stake on uh, Government auditors. Uh, you're saying, you know, let's just look at it back. Councilman, uh, Chairman, uh, Councilman uh, Orlando Sanchez, Deputy City Manager. In every position we have within the city, we do a, a, class, a, a class study, make sure that we're competitive with the market. So every single position within the city, we're competitive, where we're in the price point where we can bring people in and attract them. Uh, we have a fairly large scale, I'm not sure this one is, but it's within, within the market range where people will be attracted to the city. Well, Orlando, these are people it's just that these are folks that work for us, not for you and Scott. And we need to make sure that we get the very best. I don't think we need to recruit people better than work for the city because we've got great talent in the city. It's just that we need to make sure that we can stay abreast of what the city is doing on um, behalf of the council to make sure much better relations. And I think it, uh, it's a question of, we've got a really talented auditor. We've gone through the books and talked to somebody. How many city people can learn from that person? So I'm thinking there's an exchange of value, but, but I want to make sure we're getting the very right best here. Well, Councilman yeah. Top, this is Chairman Deputy as well. And, and, you know, I think Melanie and Joe are also involved in the industry. And I think we do see there there is not a lot of talent in this town. A lot of it has been taken. And I'm not saying that we're getting leftovers, but it's just it is very competitive. I would say the salaries, as I've looked at them and as I've talked over some of them with, with with Rad and with Brian, um, as they're hiring these people, they're keeping me up to date, and um, it is competitive. It is competitive, and they have the competitive, the ability to, to be competitive. I think it's, it's it is difficult to attract really good talent. And it's just super super competitive in this town. There's a lot of publicly traded companies. They are taking all the CPAs, they're taking all the CFEs, they're taking all the CIAs. They're they're taking the talent, and and so it's just. It's a difficult thing, and we've just got to continue. Um, I think this is a process. This isn't a, this isn't a destination that we're going to get to where once we see 10 people on that org chart, we're done. It's something that's continually um, we're evaluating. And again, that's why I think we as a, as a committee have pushed to get them staffed up. That's why we pushed to get an IT auditor in there. Everything's going to technology. And so I, I from what I can see, my perspective, and again, Maybe I'm a little more positive than than I am a good cop. <laughs> but I have been working closely with Rad and Brian on this and, and making sure that we're staying better. This has been my, my baby since since day one that I stepped down here and I felt that they needed to perform a study, they needed to look at that. And even though they do it internally, we also went out and did it externally to look at the IAA and what they have as their benchmark study as well. So I'm confident that we're moving in the right direction. Again, I do not want this to slip backwards. I do not want to say, well, we're not going to hire this person, and we're not going to hire the IT auditor, and we're not going to be competitive. And I talked with Brad about how we potentially need to be competitive with some of these positions. I wonder if we have a chance to uh, narrow our, our advertising our selection for people who are government auditors, as opposed to the private industry auditors, because we can't compete with the out there. They are probably a little younger, they're going to work 60, 80 hours a week. They're going to be under the gun, and that's not a place for a person to, you know, maybe in their 40s or 50s or older, even. In fact, that the city doesn't want that kind of pressure, but it has all the intellect and all of the uh, experience that we need. Agreed. This is, Chairman Hedden, this is, this is exactly what we're looking for, is people that have been in the public entity, uh, auditing, you know, financials, or doing this, and working in internal audit, and now they're looking for a, a different 
a change in pace or a change in lifestyle. They're, they're trying to, it's time to settle down. It's time to do other things. We can have a separate lunch with James over here and ask him why he came to the city. But, <laughs> but we can seriously look at look at that further. So, same measure. Yeah, I mean, the German food, I can see that. But I mean, um, <laughs> I think coming on the one position we put in the budget, I think we recognized in the manager's office in our tentative budget that we presented to council that we've moved a lot of our business online as a city and there really was a critical need to restore that position and and uh, the kind of auditing work that moves with where our business is moving. I would further encourage uh, Brad to not wait till July 1 to start the recruitment process. Uh, I, would, I would start the recruiting, work with HR now, anticipation of a May 21 final budget approval I, mm -hmm. um, and so that as soon after July 1 as possible you can start filling that position so but I would offer that as well. I, I would be in agreement with Mr. Chairman that I think we, we should just move forward and, and we'll, we'll face the consequences if someone tries to take that, that position away. I think we're going to assume that it's going in and that we're going to get a good person and that was a great time to do it to be quite honest with you. But the end of what the accountants call busy season, mm -hmm. and the IT auditors get called busy season, and now is when you get those people that are dissatisfied with their current position. And we can probably really attract some, some great talent. Right. Member Rule, my only thought that I wanted to state here is that it's a little, I think, more difficult for you guys to get auditors in a sense because you're not getting entry-level auditors like a public accounting firm does. You get them straight out of college and then you mold them into getting a CPA license, but you guys are wanting somebody that has credentials already and that's already, in our firm, that's the most difficult positions to fill are those that are already credentials. It's easier to pull people from college to build them up to help them get their CPA license and their credentials and so that's another um, very to entry of getting their positions filled that you're going to find is that you can't mold them from babies up. Yeah. Okay. We need a motion on this? You don't. So this is just, again, informational. So we appreciate, uh, this is Chairman Heather, appreciate uh, all the information from the auditor's office. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Uh, Brian Scott, Assistant City Attorney. I did make one error with regard to number nine. Since it is discussion for possible action, oh, there was okay. some action needed on that. The okay. clerk chastised me for that. So okay. I, I'll have to. Quiet. It's probably true with that. But, so we can go back and just. Uh, we, <laughs> call back number nine and just vote on the uh, list of audits. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So now we move to our discussion for topics for future agendas. Does anyone have anything that they would like to propose at this time that we can add to the agenda to make this meeting either shorter, I mean, uh, more enjoyable? Uh, yeah, cut out one through eight. eight. <laughs> <laughs> you always are welcome. You just have to say your name. <laughs> 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 well, I was thinking we've got to promote We have to make sure that we keep our new customers in the The new ones are not here in this room. There's three out of seven. Look at it for literally, we're having a hard time with the city council members. You can say they keep filling in and they're all new. And they don't know the audit committee, but they don't know the job of the audit. They don't realize uh, how critical this job is. And so it's upon us, I think all of us, to Try to make sure that we embrace those new members of the council so that they respect what we have to do here and understand that, that, that this committee and the staff of the, of the committee is the watchdog for the city. A lot of people don't understand the importance. It's very low, under the radar. Maybe I, I prefer to make sure that the members of the council don't think. Okay. Uh, this is Kevin Hefney. Is there any proposal on this? Oh, I think we should. We invite them. We can just have three in any one room. I'm sorry, that's. So we do, Scott Adams again, state manager, uh, we do an onboarding process for all the new council members and we've included right in that process in the audit function just so that they at least get a basic awareness and understanding of the importance of the city audit function. Okay. Any other comments or any proposals to add any other additional items to the future agenda? Okay. 
Do we need any motion for that last? No. Okay, and we'll just keep going. So this is time for the citizen participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the committee. No subject may be acted upon by the committee unless the subject. If the subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action, you just be heard. Come to the podium, give your name for the record. The amount of discussion in any single subject, as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed, may be limited. Seeing no participation, we are adjourned. Thanks. Good travel management.